So right here, here old trees, beach, beach, ash, ash. Behind that, over there is a horse chestnut. I have a squiggly willow there, some cherry trees. This is the young plantation that I've been doing over the last 15, 20 years. So there's a rowan. The small one is a sweet chestnut. Then there's a holly, a rowan. Behind that is a crab apple. We had here, there was an evergreen oak. We had two of them. One is growing really well just over there. But this one that was planted here fell over. Uh, there was a big wind, a big storm, which took out uh, our huge oak tree down there. And it also took out the evergreen oak and some rowans and things. So I've been planting other trees. This holly has been here for a long time. Not very well, but I keep hoping that it'll get better. So I transplanted this ash tree from somewhere else. This is the red oak that I planted earlier this year when I was thrilled when I found a mature red oak. I'm also growing red oaks. Uh, this is another rowan uh, I was given and I planted here. Now this is a baby rowan and I want it not to spend its energy growing seeds for wildlife. So this is when I will, whoops, I will prune off the seeds, uh, sorry, the uh, fruit. Yes, it feeds birds in the uh, autumn and winter, but I want this tree to establish a um, healthy root structure for it to grow strong. And to do so, if you eliminate the energy the tree expends on growing the fruit into a mature, uh, mature enough for it to ripen and for wildlife to eat. It could be expending that energy growing roots and growing to be a healthy tree. So I'm eliminating all of its fruit so that it will grow more underground. So this is the last one here. So these won't be food for birds, whoops, or wildlife. And potentially next year, it will have doubled in size. So I've defruited that tree. The crab apples will have a really good crop this year. That's another ash tree that I transplanted here. Here's another crab apple. This is another rowan. This is matured enough that I'm going to leave its fruit this year. So you can see that's, what, 15 feet tall, maybe? So I will leave that one for with its fruit. This is another ash tree. So I've got three ash trees. The oak will outstrip the ash trees. The ash trees, because of ash dieback, they might not survive. That's one, two, three ash trees and the one oak. But I'm hoping that the biodiversity underground will nurse the ash trees through uh, ash dieback. So there's a crab apple. Here's a holly. You can see the crab apple's fruit is there. And here's the holly has its fruit here. Then this is a really tall rowan. This is a dog rose. That's a holly. And there's the other evergreen oak. Now, if I come round here, you can see that evergreen oak. That is now, could be, it could be 10, no, it could be 15, it's 15 plus years ago since I planted that, at least 15 years ago. And then this rowan as well, more crab, another holly, a buddleia, a copper beech, and then these are the cherries that my grandfather planted years ago. You can see there's one, two, 
three, four cherry trees here. And then behind that, there's another copper beech. So there's another little cherry self sown under there. So it's all about biodiversity in the fields and in the woodlands. And that's what regenerative farming is about. It's about increasing biodiversity so that the soil can naturally rejuvenate. You can see all my dogs, like foxes, love eating the cherries. So do hedgehogs and badgers. I've been finding lots of hedgehog poop about the place with lots of cherry pips in it. So they're having a, the hedgehogs have, are having a feast, as are the birds. And as you can see, the puppy is having a feast of cherries as well. She's lying down and enjoying her cherries. <laughs> Look at that. You enjoying your cherries? Yes. Look, there she just wolfed down another cherry. So they're all enjoying their cherry. There's Bear. Sadly, the pup won't be here long enough to enjoy apples. It's so funny, all my dogs enjoy the apples. So. They're fruity dogs. They love their fruit. Isn't that right, pups? Look at them all eating the cherries. So our philosophy is that we get the bottom of the cherries and the wildlife gets the top. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the film, it is a bumper crop of cherries up there, just everywhere. And they're raining down now, so they're frightfully ripe. So the dogs are enjoying the uh, windfall cherries. The puppy just is just totally reveling in the cherries. Oh, and the other thing, people have been talking about their buddleia being in bloom. Well, buddleia in bloom now is kind of early. This buddleia, buddleia are um, woodland edge dwellers. And this is a woodland edge dwelling location. And you can see it's only just beginning to bloom here. Most of the blooms are still green spires. So there's only one partially opened two blooms on our buddleia. Now, if that was out in the open in the sun, it would be a much further along in blooming. And the early blooming buddleias miss time for when the butterflies come out. So that's why you need all the other kind of blooming plants later in the season, because buddleia are becoming earlier and earlier bloomers. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, kitty? Yeah. Yes. This person loves being around the cherry tree because he likes hunting the butterflies and birds. I don't think he's very successful at it though, thankfully. <laughs>